Hey, Archer, I see a whole bunch of you are already on here. At least like eight or nine hackers and Amruta, Archer from Cockroach. Thanks you all for coming. So if you want to look at these slides for the hackers who are here, uh, the same slides are also at cockrow.ch slash htn hyphen talk hyphen slides. So if you type that in, you should be able to look at these exact same slides. Feel free to jump ahead, behind, copy any SQL statements, commands, whatever you see on here, run them yourself. Um, I will not be waiting for people to like install things and to like run things because this is only half an hour, um, and I have a little bit of stuff to cover in the half an hour. But feel free to, uh, you know, go back to these slides after the fact and install and run these steps um, at your own pace. And if you just want to, you know, pay just if you just want to listen at the moment just to see how to do things, that is also okay. I will also drop this link in our Discord channel so you can get back to this whenever you want to. Thanks for posting the link, Amruta. Give people one more minute to join. How's everyone doing? Excited for a busy and fun weekend? Excited and nervous. That's how I felt every time I was a hacker too. Over time, the excitedness takes over the nervousness. So. Hey everyone, Johnny and I were chatting in the voice channel earlier. Okay, the attendee count has stopped increasing, so I'll get started. Um, hi everyone, so welcome to Cockroach Labs API workshop here at Hack the North. Uh, we're gonna talk about SQL. We're gonna, I'm gonna teach the basics of SQL to you all, and I'm also gonna introduce you to Cockroach Cloud where you can get a forever free Cockroach DB cluster in the cloud. Uh, what is Cockroach DB? What are all of these terms? I will explain all of those in a little bit. Uh, but before I get started, I will repeat that you can download these same slides by going to cockroach.ch slash htn hyphen talk hyphen slides. The link is also posted in the chat. I will be posting this link in Discord as well. Um, and feel free to go through these slides at your own pace after this talk. Uh, a recording of this talk will also be posted to the Hack the North YouTube. So if you miss something, you can get back to it. Um, feel free to like just listen along at the moment because this talk will go a little fast. Uh, and you can repeat like all of the commands, installations, whatever, after the fact. Uh, with that said, let's get started. Um, so what is a database and why do you need a database? So a lot of applications that you're going to build are going to look a bit like this. This is what we call a three-tier uh, architecture. 
Um, there will be some sort of a front end that could be a mobile app, that could be a desktop app, that could be a website. Uh, there will be a backend behind it that could be a bunch of REST APIs. It could be you know, running Ruby on Rails. It could be just a HTTP backend for a server. It could be really any of those things. Uh, and you will have some place to store your data or your state. Uh, and that could be KV stores. That could be SQL databases. Uh, that could be stream processors that are also part of that. You can obviously have more complex system architectures than just a three-tier application structure. Uh, but a lot of people start with three tier, and it is a motivating starting point for why you need a database because you need that data layer. And Cockroach DB can be that data layer. You want to have something. You want to have a data layer that can that is easy to connect with, that is easy to store and retrieve things with, that is reliable. It is durable. So if it crashes, it comes back up, and you did not lose any data. Uh, and it is consistent. What do I mean by consistent? I'm going to get back to this term repeatedly, so it's best to define it. Uh, by consistent, I mean uh, when you do a write, and then you do a read of that thing that you wrote right after that, you get the most recent write. This might seem obvious. You might expect this out of every system. But this is not the case out of every database. Uh, there are a lot of databases that do not guarantee strong consistency that may give you a somewhat recent write, but not the, most, not the guaranteed most recent write. Uh, but the one nice thing about SQL databases, and especially CockroachDB, is they guarantee you strong consistency. So you, as an application developer, do not have to worry about the internals of the system, how old your data will be. Um, you can just you know, expect the database to do it for you. Uh, and more importantly, since you're at a hackathon right now, you do not have weeks, months, years to figure out your application. You only have 48 hours. You want your database to be easy to set up, spin up, and manage, and spin down. Uh, and you want it to be cheap or, in our case, free. Um, so this is where Cockroach DB comes in. Cockroach DB is all of these things. So some of you might have heard about NoSQL databases like DynamoDB, MongoDB. Um, and the main reason why people use those databases is because they are very easy to scale up. If you want to go from one machine running them to Apple tier scale, Amazon tier scale, maybe, uh, NoSQL databases use, did have a very strong uh, promise of scalability that they can scale um, that they can scale horizontally. Well, SQL databases did not, at least traditional SQL databases, but they did give you strong consistency, which I described in the previous slide. Uh, what CockroachDB and what today's new SQL, these distributed SQL databases do, is they give you both. They give you that sort of horizontal scalability from those SQL databases, and they also give you strong consistency from traditional SQL databases. So CockroachDB would fall in this category, and it gives you really the best of both worlds. Feel free to ask any questions that you may have in the chat, and I will try to get to them whenever I can. Um, so CockroachDB will scale fast, survive everything, thrive everywhere. It is reliable. It is. Uh, it can survive anywhere, as, the, as our marketing model says right there. Um, and for you, the hackathon hacker, it is very easy to spin up. It is very easy to set up, to connect with, to use. All Postgres compatible clients will connect with CockroachDB as well. And it is as reliable and resilient as any enterprise to your database would be. We have some customers, some of those, some really large customers. And you can see some of those logos on there. So now let's get into a bit of a technical dive into how to use a SQL database. Um, so I will go into the basics of SQL, but let's get started with the most simple way of representing SQL data, which would be in tables. So here's a table with three columns, ID, name, and country. Um, and the ID column is a primary key of an integer. So what primary key means is um, any value in that column is going to be unique. So there's only going to be one row for ID 2, one row for ID 3, and so on. Um, and that create table statement over there will create this table that looks like this. Varchar is just a type that represents string. Uh, an integer is integer type, of course. Um, so that create table statement will describe this table. And SQL will, um, I'll get into more SQL database, uh, SQL statements later on how to manipulate, retrieve, store data. But when, you, when we talk about tables, this is what we're talking about. How do we get started with CockroachDB? Um, so there are two ways to get started with CockroachDB. You could download the CockroachDB binary and run it yourself. Um, that is easy to do. You can run it wherever you want. But there is an even easier option. You can sign up for Cockroach Cloud, which is a managed offering of CockroachDB, where we run CockroachDB for you. And all you need to do is just connect with it. Connect your uh, Python, Flask, Django, 
Ruby on Rails app, whatever, directly to it, and it is forever free. Uh, it is production ready for when you want to even use it after this hackathon. You can sign up for Cockroach Cloud at cockroachlabs.cloud slash sign up, and I will be going through those steps right now. So if you go on that website, it will have the sign up form. Um, you fill in your details, you know, verify your email, the usual thing, sign up for Cockroach Cloud free. Um, you can also sign up for the dedicated one, but it's probably overkill for a hackathon to sign up for the free one. Um, it will, you know, spin up and create your DB for you. Um, after it does that, it'll tell you how to connect to a DB and it'll give you these connection parameters. Um, you probably wanna save all of these um, and because you're gonna use these in your application to connect to the DB. Um, and remember that the password is only shown right after you create your database, your cluster. If you wanna retrieve it after the fact, you'll have to create a new SQL user, which you can easily do from the same admin console. It's not a big deal, but it's just something that you may as well save right now. Um, so these slides will also be available on that link that I mentioned earlier. So if you're missing all of these steps, that's okay, just get back to them later. So uh, once you've done all of those things, you will have a cluster that looks like this and it is running in the cloud and you can connect to it with the connect di dialogue or with the connection credentials that you saved over here. Um, but how do you connect to this database? How do you wanna you know, use it before you use it in your app if you wanna just use it and try it out? So one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to a, so, so okay, so first there are two ways to, I guess, connect. You could either use Cockroach's command line client, which is the Cockroach SQL client, which the Cockroach Cloud uh, console will tell you to download. That's one option. The other one is to use a GUI client, a graphical user interface client. And a common one that we recommend is called dbeaver. Uh, so db, if you go to dbeaver.io, you can download the free version from there. The free version works pretty well, and that can be used to connect to your Cockroach Cloud cluster. So I am gonna switch to a window of dbeaver and just show a bunch of statements running. So let me, let me actually go through a couple more slides here on just walking through the connection process and then I will uh, connect to dbeaver. So you might remember that like, um, okay, so that, so on dbeaver, there'll be a dialogue that looks like this. You select Cockroach DB, then you create a new, uh, new connection. Um, the dialogue on the connection, the connection parameters dialogue that I showed earlier, it will have these parameters on there, username, host, port, database, password, fill those in, in uh, the model for connect, in the model in dbeaver and instantiate your connection. Before you do that, remember to set the SSL uh, mode to verify CA instead of require, otherwise it will ask for a CA certificate. Um, so remember this additional step. And then once you do this, then we can get into the running of SQL. And now I will switch to my instance of DB where that is running in the background. Give me one sec. So I already have an instance of DB we're running in here. Um, I've already created the customer table that I showed earlier. I already inserted some rows in there, but just to not confuse people, let me just go back to just the create table statement. So I ran this statement, um, or let me just run it from scratch. So I'm gonna do drop table customers, and this should drop this table. Give me one sec, connect. Uh, it said drop table ran successfully. So let me go back to where, what I had earlier and I'm gonna create the table that I talked about earlier. So what a create table command does is it, like it says, it creates a table. So in this case, clicking this little arrow ran that command and now my table exists. Now if I were to do a select command, select star from customers, it'll show me all the, all the rows that are in the customers table. Since we just created this table, it's gonna be empty. So I'm just gonna run this and it's an empty table. Let me add some values into this. So let me just go ahead in my slides and copy some stuff that I had on there. Just so these steps match what you're seeing. There we go. Let's say you're building an app for wrappers. So I just added three names of wrappers. Um, I'm gonna run these three statements and that's gonna populate 
it's at three rows updated. Now, if I were to run the select command again, now you see those values have been populated into the table. Um, I can run more complex select statements, such as select start from customers, where um, ID is greater than two. And that will that would only filter the that would filter the table for only the rows that have a value greater than two, which is only one of them. Um, I can do things like select star from customers, uh, where, or I could I could do something like update customers set country equals Canada where ID equals three. So you might remember that's that row. If I run this update statement, what that's saying is set the country column to Canada for the rows where ID equals three. Um, so I'm just going to run that statement. And it said one row was updated. Now, if I ran my select command from earlier, that's going to, you can see that this row used to say UK in the country column, but now it says Canada. So that is an example of an update statement. Now, if I were to do, to let's do something like this, select update customer set ID equals two, where ID equals three. This should return an error because if you might remember, the ID column is a primary key column. It cannot have duplicates. Um, setting this row's ID to two would make that clash with the other one. So this should error out. Yep, it says duplicate unique constraint is getting violated. Um, so we cannot run an update statement like that. So now you know how to run insert statements. Now you know how to run update statements. Let's teach you how to run delete statements. Um, and then you should be able to you know, do basic manipulation in SQL. So let's do delete from customers where ID equals two. Then that should delete that one row in the customers table. And now if you run our select statement again, now that row is completely gone. Now you only have ID one and ID three. Um, all of these, as well as some more examples of select statements are also in the slides if you are looking at those. Um, so now I will go back to the presentation. One sec. There we go. We ran that statement. We ran that statement. We ran that statement. So one thing that is really unique about CockroachDB, since it's a distributed database, you can do some things like um, you can distribute the effort that's happening. So here's an example of a bit more of a complicated statement. So here you're running a group by operation based on the country column. So what it's doing is it is coalescing, it is aggregating the rows by the countries um, and then returning the counts for those. So an example of this uh, would be like, if you had like, let's say two rows for the same country, then you would see two in that country and then one for the other country uh, because it is aggregating by those. So you can imagine on a very large data set, this would be a very expensive operation. Uh, but what CockroachDB can do is it can distribute this work to different nodes that could be living closer to where that data is. Um, so here we will walk through the execution plan for the statement for this select query. Um, so it's going to start with scanning the entirety of the customer's table that lives in each of those nodes in each of those different localities. It looks like once in Western Europe, once in the Eastern United States, and once in the Western United States. So all of those nodes are going to scan through the table that lives on themselves, which is not the whole table. They only have a part of it. Um, they're going to do this aggregation locally. Um, and if, if the data is distributed such that the entirety of one country lives in one of these nodes, then it can do all of this work for itself. And it is only going to report back the results and do another aggregation step if necessary at the node where data is being aggregated and being returned to the user, which is in this case is your application. Um, and in this way, you've seen that what would have been a very expensive operation for one single node to do um, in which case it would have had to like get the raw results from, which could be thousands and thousands and millions and millions of rows. Instead of doing that, it pushes down this work across multiple nodes. And this is distributed SQL execution. And this is something that Cockroach leverages very heavily. 
Um, and it is very useful for any large applications and any large use cases of databases. So the statement that I was talking about earlier, with our original three rows, it would have, reserved, it would have returned these values. Um, I already talked about the select statement as well. We did an update like this. We did that update. We did that select as well. Um, you can look at these examples at your own leisure, but we've had most of these. But here's the more important part. Running and connecting to the database from your GUI client is fun and all, but ultimately you want to build something. Ultimately you want to build something that will use the database and you know do something else cool with it. Um, so how do you connect your application to Cockroach DB? There are two general ways to do this. Uh, one is to use a SQL client, something like Postgres node. Um, and what that lets you do is you can write your SQL statements directly in your code, and those SQL statements will run against Cockroach DB using that SQL driver. So we call these database drivers. That's one option. It is direct, but it is less clean because you have to write these SQL statements yourself. The other option is to use what we call an ORM or object relational mapping. And what an ORM lets you do is instead of writing raw SQL statements, you will be writing the general way of the operation you're doing, such as in the, instead of writing this select star from customers where country equals Canada, you would be doing customers.findall where country is Canada. Uh, this is a SQLize uh, statement or a SQLize function call. And SQLize is a Node.js uh, JavaScript ORM. So you can see how more JavaScripty this line of code is, as opposed to this, which is very much plain SQL. So ORMs let you do things that look and feel more like code from the host language, in this case, JavaScript. Uh, there are ORMs for all sorts of languages. And your code will look cleaner with an ORM. But if you prefer to write plain SQL and you just want to just directly connect with the database, then feel free to go ahead and use a database driver. I'm going to list a bunch of database drivers and ORMs for a bunch of languages in the next couple of slides. If you're using Node.js JavaScript, you could directly use the Node Postgres driver. Um, or you could use the SQLize ORM, which I had the example for in the previous slide. Or you could use type ORM, which is good for TypeScript. Um, examples of using Cockroach DB and Cockroach Cloud with each of these tools are present in that link down there. You can look at the slides and click on that link if you want. Um, if you are using Ruby on Rails uh, or if you're using Ruby on its own. So Ruby on Rails has an ORM built into it called Active Record that also works with Cockroach DB how to use either that or the Ruby Postgres driver. Um, those are also present, present on that docs link down there. If you're using Python, we support all of these of these. The Psycho PG2 driver is a raw driver, and the others are all ORMs. Uh, Django's ORM also works with, uh, with Cockroach DB and Cockroach Cloud. Examples and example code and how to use these and connect this with Cockroach DB, they're all present in that docs link over there as well. If I did not list your language, if I did not list something that you're using, we have a long list of tools that are known to work with Cockroach DB and how to use them uh, on that link over there. So that is it as far as using and connecting to Cockroach DB goes. Any questions so far? Feel free to drop them in the chat. And if you have any questions while you're hacking, if you're stuck with something, feel free to drop in our channel, Cockroach Labs on Discord. Uh, and ask away, we we will be having people throughout the hackathon just to look at, look out for questions and to answer them. Amruta, Archer, and Richard are the helpful folks who will be helping you out this weekend. Yeah, so I'm not done with the talk. Now is the interesting part. Say you want to work for us. Oh, I see there's a question. So let me answer that first. What's the benefit of using Cockroach Cloud over Cockroach DB? Um, so I talked about this briefly over here. Where was it? There we go. So Cockroach DB is just a standalone database binary. You can download it and run it yourself. You could run it yourself in the cloud. You could run it on your own laptop. If you prefer managing and running databases yourself, you should go that approach. But if you want to save time, if you want to reduce your stress during a hackathon where you already have enough things to manage, uh, Cockroach Cloud would be the easier option because it is going to give you a running database within a minute. Uh, and all you need to do is just connect to it. And we will handle the running and managing of it for you. 
hope that answers your question. Um, I will also have more time for questions right after this. But you probably came here because you've heard something about CockroachDB or Cockroach Labs, the company. So Cockroach Labs, the company, was founded in 2015 by Spencer Kimball, Peter Mattis, and Ben Darnell, who met each other at Google and before that. Uh, and now we are at 350 plus employees. That photo on the right covers less than half of our company right now. And it is from the pre-COVID era, which is why you, you know, see people huddle up. Um, so we're primarily based in New York, but we also have a lot of people really distributed around the world. And we have engineering offices in Toronto and San Francisco. We are going to be remote slash hybrid friendly going forward. Uh, and at the moment, almost everyone is working from home. What do we primarily do? We develop, maintain, and support Cockroach DB and Cockroach Cloud. Now you know what those are. Uh, and if you're interested in working for us, feel free to ask any of us questions about how it's like working here, because Richard, myself, Amruta, and uh, Archer are all around to answer questions like those. Many of us have interned here before, and all of us are working here full time at the moment. And if you want to apply for those internships, uh, Venture and Spring 2022 intern postings are already up and open, uh, both on Waterloo Works if you're a Waterloo student. And if you're not on our careers page, cockroachlabs.com slash careers. I see there's a question about can high school students intern? Unfortunately, I believe not at the moment. Uh, but when you're in university and uh, we do look forward to uh, you know working with you. And new grad postings will be posted next week. So watch out for those, because those will also be posted on the careers page very, so very shortly. OK. Um, and last but not least, so you can access these slides by going to cockroach.ch slash htn talk slides. You can sign up for a Cockroach Cloud cluster forever free on cockroachlabs.cloud slash sign up, and all the dots are on that link. And if you have any more questions that I'm not able to get to in this presentation, in this workshop, drop by our channel. It's called Cockroach Labs, but you might have to join it through the Sponsor Lounge channel on Discord. You have to click like a React to join this channel. It's pretty easy. Uh, and we will be deciding uh, our API prize winners for the best, best use of Cockroach DB and Cockroach Cloud by Sunday. Now let me get to the questions. OK, Dhrumil, I see your question got answered. The tenant ID and stuff. Yep, that should all be in the connect modal under connection parameters. Can the internships be done remotely? Uh, the answer is yes. All of us are working remotely at the moment, but there are some restrictions around where you need to be based for legal reasons. We should be able to hire in most of the United States and all of Canada, I believe. Uh, anything other than that, I don't think I can, I, I don't think I know the specifics. Uh, but if you're definitely in North America, we can make something work. Can international students apply? If you're an international student currently living in North America, um, and by North America, I mean the US and Canada, then the answer is definitely yes. Sorry, when I say living, I mean you have work authorization in those places, which most students do. Any other questions? OK, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I think that might be it. Well, thank you all for coming. Hope you learned a little bit of SQL and how to use this database in your hacks. Looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Um, we will be around in our channel, um, Cockroach Labs, like I mentioned. We will also be around in our sponsor booth uh, between 6 and 7 PM Eastern, and again between 8.30 and 10 PM Eastern tonight. Um, so stop by our booth and say hi to us. and you know, ask about how it's like working here or the pros and cons, cons of using Cockroach DB, that kind of stuff. Um, as well as throughout the weekend, the four of us will be around to answer any questions you have about using Cockroach in your hack. So thank you all and take it easy.